A little bit of sunshine today. I see a few more smiles. Certainly God shines on us. I'd like to begin today by reading you a little excerpt that comes from the prophet Isaiah. It's not the reading that we heard this morning. It, uh, it's chapter 40 instead of 15. If you get a chance, maybe look it up. It begins like this. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak to the hearts of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service has ended, that her guilt is expiated, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice proclaims in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rugged land shall be a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Certainly, we can imagine that this reading prophesies what John the Baptist would say 700 years later. It's rare where one prophet foretells of another prophet that is coming. So the words we, we hear today, we can just imagine coming from John the Baptist. And I don't believe they, they roll off his tongue. I believe there's a roar coming from this man. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. The kingdom of God is at hand. Certainly you can see how it reverberates with his audience. They must have been startled. They must have been disturbed. They must have really hated what they were hearing. But should you and I take that same approach? For God is doing a mighty work through this prophet. This prophet is a bizarre man. He comes from the desert. He wears camel hair, a belt around in his waist. His diet consists of locusts and wild honey. Can you imagine serving your children locusts? We can't even get them to eat broccoli <laughs> along some green grasshoppers. Certainly, John makes an impression upon his audience. But why should you and I listen? I think the words say it all. Sometimes we do need to repent. We do need to change our ways. John is addressing sin. And sin is something that we, we really don't like dealing with. We like hearing about the grace of God or the mercy of God. But apparently, sin is important for us to really accept that we're falling at times. We make mistakes, big mistakes even. But the reality is God wants us to change our ways in preparation for his kingdom so that it can come in its fullness. And if you don't believe that sin is important, look what Jesus was willing to do for your and I sin. He was willing to die on the cross. But of this prophet... Jesus said he's one of the greatest men to ever live. So what John says, we really should take to heart. What does he really mean? What 
are the ramifications 2,000 years ago for you and I in our lives? What do we need to prepare for? What do we need to change our lives so we can live the gospel accordingly to the way that Jesus commands us? Loving God with the fullness of our hearts and our neighbors the same way. Certainly, this prophet's words, they echo within our hearts. They're embedded somehow. Of all the scriptures we know, this is probably one of the ones that stand out to us the most. So really, when we look at our lives, we, we're asked to examine them, especially during this Advent season. We need to make preparations proper preparations, important preparations. We have to ask ourselves an important question. How does God see me? Let me say that again. How does God see me? It's much different than how do I imagine God. You see, by asking that question, we have to look interiorly and what is our heart's desires? What makes us tick? What do we think is important in our lives? Certainly, we, we know that our lives are not perfect. And we might say to ourselves by listening to these things of John, Am I ready to receive Christ? Am I ready for him to come? Or am I ill prepared? Do I need to do certain things in my life? Maybe make amends or mend fences to make relationships right. Maybe I'm called to righteous living. Certainly God has a call on us. And he always does it through the prophets. True prophets, they don't sell you something like false prophets. They proclaim to you, usually loudly, obnoxiously. They get under our skin and make us uncomfortable and uneasy. But they carry the message of God. And that message is one of great importance this weekend. It's one that we need to take to heart. Now, each and one, every one of us was baptized. We are baptized and anointed priest, prophet, and king. We, too, we have a prophetic role to carry out to bring a message to our neighbors within our souls, within our hearts, the message that God is coming. So that makes us commissioned prophets, prophets that God bears within our hearts a message for the world around us. Prepare. Make way for the Lord. Certainly, it's a message that our world needs to hear. I want you to think about what we heard in the first reading of Isaiah, where the wolf lies down with the lamb. Think about that world, a world of peace, and justice of harmony and of love. Amen.